While the Kriegsmarine had prepared for an attack on British trade routes with its U-boat arm, the Luftwaffe had not seriously considered long-range attacks on enemy shipping prior to 1940. However, in a remarkable display of ingenuity, and within a very short time, the Luftwaffe was able to adapt existing long-range Focke-Wulf FW-200 Condor civil airliners to the anti-shipping mission, and scored some impressive successes against Allied convoys that had little protection from air attack. Introduction After the fall of France in June 1940, the Third Reich was faced with only two strategic military options to deal with its remaining enemy, Great Britain. It could mount a direct assault on the home islands, or it could adopt a blockade strategy and attempt to cut off the British economy from its overseas sources of raw materials. Adolf Hitler was never confident about mounting an invasion of Great Britain, and even before the Luftwaffe made its bid to force the British to the negotiating table during the Battle of Britain, he authorized the Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine to mount intensive attacks on British trade to bring the war economy to a standstill. While the Kriegsmarine had prepared for an attack on British trade routes with its U-boat arm, the Luftwaffe had not seriously considered long-range attacks on enemy shipping prior to 1940. However, in a remarkable display of ingenuity, and within a very short time, the Luftwaffe was able to adapt existing long-range Focke-Wulf FW-200 Condor civil airliners to the anti-shipping mission, and scored some impressive successes against Allied convoys that had little protection from air attack. Although not built for war, the Condor established such a combat reputation that Winston Churchill soon referred to it as the scourge of the Atlantic. In contrast, the Royal Navy spent considerable effort prior to the war on developing doctrine and tools for trade protection, but the main threats were thought to be U-boats and German surface raiders. Convoys, ASDIC, and escorts were regarded as the answers to those threats. It was assumed that the Royal Air Force would protect merchant shipping in British coastal waters from enemy air attack. Yet since very few long-range aircraft existed in the mid-1930s, the risk of air attack on convoys further out to sea was regarded as unlikely and few measures were taken to provide any kind of defense for this. Thus until mid-1941. The initial duel between the Luftwaffe's four D U E zero two five C O R R eight Q X D duel nine eleven zero nine eleven twenty seven page four. 
Osprey Publishing. FW200 Condors and Britain's Atlantic Convoys was essentially one-sided, with merchant shipping virtually defenseless against air attack. Yet in another amazing display of adaptability, the Royal Navy was able to develop a series of countermeasures in 1941-42, with some help from the RAF and United States Army Air Force that essentially neutralized the threat to shipping posed by the FW-200 Condors. The Development of Catapult Aircraft Merchant Ships and escort carriers, as well as better coordination with long-range aircraft of the RAF's Coastal Command, effectively created an air umbrella over the convoys that became increasingly difficult for the Condors to penetrate. Condors that attempted to bomb convoys were shot down with greater frequency, and the Luftwaffe was forced to suspend this type of anti-shipping attack. However, just as it appeared that the duel had virtually been decided, the Luftwaffe added a new dimension in 1943 that offered the possibility of reversing the advantage once again by introducing standoff attacks with guided missiles. It was only the general deterioration of the Luftwaffe's overall strength and the growing power of Allied air forces that prevented the missile-armed Condor and its successor, the Heinkel He-177, from inflicting serious losses on Allied convoys in 1943-44. In summary, the duel between FW-200 Condors and Britain's Atlantic convoys illustrates the importance of being able to adapt off-the-shelf hardware for new missions and highlights the difficulty of preventing a small enemy strike force from attacking shipping across a broad swath of ocean. Pre-war postcard depicting an FW-200 Condor airliner crossing the Atlantic. Fock Wolf hoped to dominate the nascent transatlantic passenger market with the Condor. This particular aircraft, one of the original pre-production models, was sold to Brazil in June 1939 and remained in service until 1947. D-U-E-0-2-5-C-O-R-R-8 QXD Dual 9110911-27 Page 5 Chronology 6 November 12th Admiralty and RAF agree to develop CAM ships 1941. January 22nd. Royal Navy begins converting first escort carrier from Merchant Hull. February 26th Convoy OB-290 is attacked by four FW-200s, resulting in seven ships sunk. 1936. August 1st. Lufthansa places order with Focke Wolf for FW-200 prototype. 1937. British Admiralty begins looking for new anti-aircraft weapon to equip merchant ships and escorts. September 6, first flight of FW-200 V-1 prototype. 1938. June 27. An FW-200 flies non-stop from Berlin to Cairo. August 10. An FW-200 achieves first non-stop flight from Berlin to New York City. 1939. March. Fock Wolf begins converting an FW-200B into armed V-10 prototype. September 18, Luftwaffe orders 20 FW-200 CS for use as maritime patrol aircraft. October 1, 0, F, E, R, N, A, U, F, K, L, A, R, U, N, G, S, T, A, F, F, E, L, 
is formed and soon redesignated 1. KG 40. 1940. February 19 kilograms 40 receives first FW 200 C1. April 18. First FW 200 attack on British shipping. May 25th. First Condor shot down by a British fighter. June 9th. First British merchant vessel sunk by KG 40 Condor. July. Condors operate against individual shipping in the western approaches August 17th. Germany declares a total blockade of Britain. October 27th first FW200 attack on a convoy. Kurt Tank, the aeronautical engineer at Fock Wolf GmbH. He was the driving force behind first developing the FW200 as a revolutionary civilian airliner and then converting it to a maritime patrol aircraft. Tank was eager to carve out military contracts for Fock Wolf, which in 1939 was almost dead last among other German aircraft manufacturers and orders from the RLM. D U E 0 2 5 C O R R 8 Q X D Dual 911 0 911 27 page 6 Osprey Publishing 7 1942 August Cam ships are discontinued in the Atlantic, but remain in the Mediterranean. 1943 November. In the KG-40 begins receiving HS-293 guided bombs for its condors. 194-4. February. FW-200 production ends. March 6. Churchill orders priority should be given to converting cam ships. May 5. RAF forms merchant ship fighter unit. May 31st. A cam ship carries out first trial launch of a fighter. June 20th. HMS Audacity, first escort carrier, is commissioned. August 3rd. A hurricane from a fighter catapult ship shoots down an FW-200 Condor. September 21st a martlet from HMS Audacity shoots down an FW-200. The FW-200 V-1 prototype approaching New York City on August 11, 1938. It had taken the Condor 24 hours and 36 minutes to fly the 6,371 km from Berlin. This accomplishment was a major propaganda coup for Lufthansa, the Third Reich and Fock Wolf GmbH. Design and Development F-200 Condor Once Hitler came to power in 1933, his regime was greatly interested in expanding the development of Germany's aviation industry and in conducting propaganda coups that would enhance the international prestige of the Third Reich. Whenever possible, these two policy goals were to be combined. The German national airline, Deutsche Lufthansa, offered excellent potential to develop such new dual-use technologies both for future military applications as well as for shining a global spotlight on German technical prowess. The Reich Air Ministry run by the former head of Lufthansa, Erhard Milch, was established to ensure close coordination between military and civil aviation. Lufthansa was eager to carve out a dominant niche in the newly emerging commercial aviation market and in 1932 it had chosen the reliable Junkers built Ju-52-3 Mackie tri-motor as its standard passenger liner. 
By 1936, three quarters of Lufthansa's 60 strong aircraft fleet were of this one type. Unfortunately, the Ju 52 could only compete economically on the medium range routes to Spain, Italy, and Scandinavia, and its lack of a pressurized cabin was hardly state of the art in passenger comfort. When the American built DC 2 appeared in 1934, Followed by the even better DC-3 in 1935, Lufthansa's leadership knew that they needed a superior aircraft to the Ju-52 if they were going to compete for new long-haul routes to the Americas, Africa, and the Far East. Developing a reliable means of transatlantic passenger service, which Lufthansa had been considering even before Hitler came to power, seemed a very attractive goal for German civil aviation. Initially, Lufthansa went with a lighter-than-air approach, constructing the airships Graf Zeppelin and Hindenburg. These eight airships were used to validate long-range navigation techniques, but their inherent fragility and huge cost marked them more as test beds rather than the final solution. Once the DC-3 appeared, Lufthansa wanted a new civil airliner with intercontinental range that would allow it to dominate the new routes.